right. Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome uh, once again to a Silver Brush Educator uh, Facebook Live event. Thank you for joining us. Um, we've got some fun stuff to talk to you about today. And uh, a little bit different than what we've been doing, I wanted to uh, just start out with a, a bit of a brief discussion here with my mom. So I'm Warren Flax. This is Dee Silver. She is the founder of Silver Brush Limited. Um, and you have been kind enough to give us some of your time, and we appreciate that. We're going to take about 45 minutes here today, um, hopefully teach you some fun stuff uh, about brushes, uh, maybe a little bit of history, maybe a little bit of uh, cleaning tips, and um, specifically focus on one type of brush for one type of media, uh, which we think will be really helpful for you, uh, which is pretty popular. Um, so to that end, um, we're going to be giving away some free stuff as well, which is usually pretty popular. Uh, so we are going to be sp speaking mostly today about Golden Natural, uh, the Golden Natural series, which is a blend of a natural hair and a synthetic. And so we feel it would be appropriate to give away some Golden Natural. So this set is going to be one of our prizes today, and this has um, a great three-quarter inch wash in this set. Uh, it also has a very, very tiny round uh, for great detail work, and it has a shader flat shader, size 6 I believe, yes, and then uh, an ultra round, an extra long round, which I know my mom is going to talk about a little bit later. So this set uh, retails for, let me just check the list here, it, this is this one, $60, right on the dot, US dollar sixty is the retail value of this set, we're going to be giving that away today. Second thing we're going to be giving away is this Tuscany case. This is a great case, retail value $20.35. Uh, it has pockets on both sides, and it's breathable, which is very important. You don't want to keep the air in. We want it breathable. Whatever you're doing, as you know, to store your brushes, make sure it can breathe uh, so that they don't get moldy uh, and have all those kinds of problems. And then third, uh, we're going to do this great set, so more Golden Natural that we're going to give away today. This has an angle. It has a filbert, has a nice long liner, and a number eight round. Again, great combination for watercolor and other media. I think that's the, probably the most useful brushes you can ever have in your, in your toolbox. And that one is $57.15, so also oh, great value reasonable. and uh, great, great giveaway. So to that end, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Golden Natural today. I wanted to ask you first... Mom, and, and you're not prepared. I didn't tell you what these questions no, are going to be. No, I have no idea. So uh, we'll see how this goes <laughs> for you. But uh, look, it's been a challenging year for a lot of folks out there around the world or in the United States, and um, our company's doing very well. Uh, and so the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to thank all of you. Uh, we really do appreciate each and every one of you, uh, whether you're already a customer of ours or whether you're just evaluating us. We know that uh, your time is valuable, your money is valuable, and uh, we always want to make sure that we uh, let you know that we appreciate you and everything you do for us in supporting our company. Uh, and the growth that we've had this year in the last three years has truly been amazing around the United States, around Canada, and around the world. And so we thank you for that. Um, but I wanted to ask you, Mom, you know, in terms of this year, what, what do you feel right now about our company and where we've been and where we're going? You started this company 30 years ago. Uh, in actually, the basement of my house. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I remember. Yeah. And, uh, and now here we are, uh, mm -hmm. speaking to people all around the world um, right. and, and people demanding your products. These brushes, all they all came out of your head. Um, so what, what do you think now about where the company is and um, potentially where it's going? Well, what I see is um, a real, un beginning to see a, a real understanding of quality difference. You know, I've always been, I've been a preacher of, you know, spend a little bit more and you have so much more. You will have a much, much better quality product. And it will last you for years upon years upon years. And with this shutdown and everything and what everything else is going on, people are realizing that yeah, you can get 10 brushes for 9.99, but it's going to last you maybe 10 days if you're lucky or one painting. Whereas if you buy our brushes, it's going to last you for years and years and years. It is a bit more money, but in terms of the durability and the longevity of it, people are really beginning to see that that it pays off to put a little bit more into their tools and they have it so much longer. So what I see this year is that people are beginning to really appreciate quality and they, they love the idea of, I'm going to buy this brush and I'm going to be able to use it for 10 or 15 years. And that, that really is having a, a, 
a resonance throughout uh, the entire uh, art world because you know people are getting tired of this you know the, the the hair that falls out it flakes all over the place and you know it, it really is such a quality difference that I think that's one of the big changes that I'm seeing okay now uh, specifically talking about golden natural mm -hmm. so this is just so everyone knows Golden Natural is a brush that's been in our line for a number of years. Since the beginning. Since the beginning. Since the beginning. It's been around a long mm -hmm. time, but to be completely honest, it was not that popular until the past year. And so we made some changes to it. We changed the look, we changed the feel, um, but, but the performance is the same. Mm -hmm. um, some people really wanted you to just drop this all together. Well, that's true. Why, so my question for you is, why did you feel so strongly about keeping Golden Natural in the line, and uh, you've been proven right already, even though there's been some challenges this year, obviously, with the right. lockdowns, but um, why did you feel so strongly about keeping Golden Natural available to artists? That, that really is a very good question. So when we originally came out with this series, and I hope you can see that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this. I, I have some pictures that you can really see it up close and very, very clearly. Um, you are able to see the different color hair that's in the head over here. So that dark hair is actually the animal hair. And the golden color is golden taclon. Which is the synthetic. Which is the synthetic, that's correct. So we change the head to make it more clearer that it's a combination hair. And then I also change the color of the handle so that people would know that it's been updated and changed a great deal. But what, what, the reason I kept this in, and, and it, it was a slog, and it was very, very difficult, is that I knew there was nothing at this price this extraordinary in terms of quality. Um, I was just reading over a couple of quotes that I have from some people that I asked for endorsements a few years ago, and I have a, a, a woman I work with extensively, and she's, um, she represents our company, and she says, she's an artist, and she says, if people not buy no other brushes, they buy no other brushes, they should have Golden Natural in their toolbox. Because this is the one that she's, it's her go-to brush. It's the brush she's been using year after year after year. It's durable, it's long lasting. And there's, it's so unique that there's, there's nothing like it in the market. So I changed it because people thought the old way it looked, but look, it was all golden color. And people thought they confused it with Taclon, Golden Taclon. Well, so just to be clear, it's a mix of a natural absolutely. hair and a, and a golden tablet. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a mix. So because of the animal hair, you get this wonderful absorbency, much more so than, gold, with, than golden tacklon. And the reason why I had to change the look is because everybody confused this brush with just a golden tacklon. We have golden tacklon to, here too, but it, it can't compare to this in terms of absorbency and, and control and everything else. So what's happened is uh, we've been able to make people understand it's a little bit more money than Golden Taclon. It is, but boy, oh boy, does this, this little thing uh, really perform. So it's, it's an extraordinary brush. So why did I keep it in here? Because I had faith that once people understood what this brush is about, they would see that it's completely different from Golden Taclon and give it a shot. And that's what's happening. That's the people really are seeing the difference between this and other brushes um, that may look like it, but they're not like this. So I know you're going to get into some specifics with it. That's I'm, okay. I'm done with the interview now, mm -hmm. so we can let you start doing painting, which That's is everybody okay. really wants to see. But some great, great questions that folks are typing in, and we Please. do appreciate them. Please. And I do apologize that I won't get to them all. Uh, but I know one that popped through that I just saw, uh, which I think is a great question, is so how does this compare to black velvet? I, I was hoping somebody would ask me that. <laughs> oh, that's such a great question. Thank you for asking it. Okay, this is a lot more controlling. So the, the big difference between this brush and black velvet is this is much more controlling. So if you want to control the paint in your brush, that's what this is. Black velvet is like a sponge. So it holds a huge amount of color. So if you're putting down a, a large wash, if you're putting down, you know, a large amount of fluid, you know, black velvet's extraordinary for this. But this is much more controlling. I think the best way to describe it is, <laughs> please don't make fun of my artwork. I know I have no talent. But anyway, I, I have a turkey here. And I wanted to show how easy it is to stay within the lines. 
You know, an illustrator used to, here, you could show that a little bit closer if you would. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. It's nothing terrific. But an illustrator. What's the surface? This, oh, okay. This is a, a canvas, um, a, a, a piece of canvas. Uh, it came off a pad. And what I, media did you use? And what media? I was using a, acrylic. I was using an acrylic paint. Tube acrylic? Tube acrylic. Okay. Yeah. There was also a question about heavy body, and I know you'll get into what media are best with Bold and Natural. Here's the great answer to that. Any media. That's the difference with this particular brush than almost any other brush that looks like it on the market. You can use it in oil color if you clean it up with an odorless solvent because of the mixture that's in here. It really is a fantastic. Remember, you have to clean it up with an odorless solvent so you don't melt the synthetic filaments. That's very important. But you can use this in any media. Remember, if you use this in a water-based pa paint, don't take it and put it into oil-based paint. You put it in oil-based paint, don't use it in watercolor because you're using a solvent in it and you don't want to get the solvent in your water-based paint. That's very important for you to know. Do you have any gouache there in your uh, I do. Palette? This is this is gouache. To see it play in, in gouache. So now you want at some some uh, you're going to want some talent here, with, which I can't actually offer you. This is gouache over here. I yeah. We'll get tight on that. I believe this is gouache, if I can remember correctly. So I'm going to put this little his little waddle over here, it with red. When I've ever seen turkeys, they had a red waddle over there. And this is gouache. Now, I took it right out of the tube, and I didn't water it down or anything, so this is pretty thick. And this is a, uh, this may not be the right shape for this particular uh, area, but it, this is this is gouache. It'll, this is um, acrylic. This is gouache. I also have fluid acrylic that I have here, which we'll be able to use. And I have watercolor as well. Before we go on, I just want sure. to remind everybody, because we always get questions about brush care, um, on our social media platforms, so obviously you all are looking today on Facebook, um, but we're also in Instagram as well, and, and Kira, who you know does a great job managing those, um, we have brush care tips on both Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to those, uh, because when you do that, you'll get alerts when we have more live events. We're going to be doing live events in the future on Instagram, as well as here on Facebook, oh. like we do every two weeks. I didn't know that. You didn't know that, did no, you? But no, yes, I did not. Yes, you're going to be on Instagram as well. Well, what Your do you know? Your audience is growing. My audience um, is growing. And of course, on our website, silverbrushcare.com, uh, we have tons of brush care tips and tricks, so make sure you um, check that out as well on the site. So to that end, back to your turkey here. Yeah, my November little turkey here. Turkey. This is my November-themed turkey. I do have to tell you that at the end of each one of these sessions, and I did a session late um, earlier in uh, October, and um, I, we, we actually ended up leaving here quite late in the evening because it was a, a Jerry's Live uh, event, which was very exciting and wonderful. And you know what? I didn't do a very good job cleaning my brushes. So the next day I had quite a job cleaning out my brushes. So... You're all forgiven for not doing such a perfect job for cleaning your brushes, but one thing... Well, you did lay them flat. I, lay, I was going to say, I laid them flat, I put them on a, a, a towel so that they could start draining out the color, and the next day I came in right away, and they were flat, and I did clean, I did clean the brushes. So we're all guilty of, of doing things that we perhaps could do better job with artist brushes. So let, let me continue with, um, with Golden Natural because it's a very, very unusual series. And we're actually, I, I'm actually adding two shapes to the series, which I'm very, very excited about. So now we have, you know, we have our rounds and we have uh, what we call a shader, which is actually a flat. We needed a fancy name. Uh, so this is, the, this is the flat shape. We also, of course, have it in angle. This is a, a lot of different shapes in this particular series, and I have a nice picture of some fans also. And the fans, of course, are very utilitarian. Oh, you can make grass with that, right and, there's, there. and there's a fan right there. there you go. There you go. So again, you could see the animal hair that's in it, and as well as the golden taclon. And um, you know, anybody that uses this um, absolutely falls in love with it. So um, I've been, I, we work with a, a wonderful watercolorist. His name is Tom Lynch, and this is his go-to brush. This is the brush that he absolutely loves. We're doing an extra length out um, 
round uh, that uh, I started doing a few years ago. The ultra round. The ultra round, and this is a very interesting brush. You see it's got a little belly over there and it comes out to a real long point. We have that now up to a size 16, which is a very, very large brush. See that? It, it also you can what get a lot of paint. One? This is small size. This is a 12. Okay. This is this is a relatively small size. It goes down to a 6 in that. Uh, it does? Okay, yeah. then you would know better than me. Okay, so we're going to give a little color over here to our little bird. And you can see how beautifully that hugs the lines and goes right into the detail over there. Okay. That's what I love about this brush. Now, one of the things that you can do with the, um, this brush is, you know, just, just it's so utilitarian, you'll be able to use it in almost anything that you want, you're going to want to paint with. So I thought I'd introduce you to two new shapes that we're coming out with, but let me show you the other shapes as well. So of course we have it in the round, we have it in the angle. That's the big round, that's a 16, right? Uh, that's big, no, it's a, only a 12. Oh, it's oh, a 12. Sorry, the, uh, the yeah. yeah, this is the um, this is our square uh, wash, and why do we call it a square wash? Notice how it, it looks just like a square, and you can do a lot of background washes with this. Now, what's the purpose of that acrylic handle? Acrylic handle has some very good uses, and um, it's something that was taught to me by an old brush maker who I used to work for a very long time ago, before most of you were born. And first of all, you, one of the things you can do with the acrylic candle is take paint off of the surface or do any kind of um, you know, embellishment or anything like that, any kind of scraping. So that makes it really very utilitarian. The other thing you can do with this, this is a watercolor pad, and they have that little area in the back where you can put something in it, and you can, instead of using a, a knife, which I've seen. I, I've actually been at trade shows where uh, someone come up, came up to me with with bloody fingers and band-aids on it. He didn't know how to get the paper off of here. And I showed him, all you have to do is put this little plastic edge over here and just pull the paper up. And that's how you get it off. It's very simple. You don't have to hurt yourself. And that's another thing that this plastic handle is good for. So it, it is a utilitarian um, handle for anybody that's working with this brush. But you know, anytime you want to put down background color, you want to um, put down a, a large wash or anything like that, that's what these brushes are great for. You know, they hold a huge amount of color. And it, that's what, you know, this is a great wash brush. This is a 140 pound cold press. And that's my favorite paper. Uh, but there are there are What's other. What's the media that you're using right now? Right now, I'm using actually fluid acrylics. I'm okay. using a fluid acrylic. I really should be using watercolor on this, but I wanted to show you a bunch of different mediums. Yeah, I'll, I'll do some watercolor for you also. Well, it's that versatility of the Golden Natural. It it, it really is. It's unique. it's just an amazing brush, and you see how much color it holds. So now this is watercolor. This is watercolor, okay. and notice how I'm getting controlled strokes. When we were talking about the difference between this brush, Golden Natural, and Black Velvet, you're not going to have, I, I, I find the, the strokes with Black Velvet not as controlling as I find it with Golden Natural. And since I like to kind of figure out where am I going with whatever it is I'm painting, I prefer it to be more controlled than less controlled. For me, that works better. But there is some beautiful, beautiful artwork that obviously folks who are using gold, uh, black velvet do, and they, they know what they're doing in terms of control. Well, and there's certainly a case to be made for the artist having both. Um, given the differences between black velvet and golden natural, um, they serve different purposes, uh, and the golden natural is about half the price of black velvet. Well, that's true. That's absolutely true. But remember, this is a very, very long-lasting brush. Um, we try and really give you a lot of bang for your buck. And this is a brush that you're going to be able to use years and years and years. We have samples out that we had given to folks back in the early 90s when I created this item, and they're still using the brushes. So, uh, you know, that, that's a real, that's, that's a real uh, you know, endorsement for this particular brush. Um, let me move on and show you some more things. So 
this is kind of exciting. I'll show you something new. And this is the, um, this is just the round. You can see that, uh, that too has a lovely, it's, it, it's got a lovely uh, point on it. It's, yeah, and it holds a huge amount of color. See that? And the fluid, so I'll go back to, this is um, acrylics. That's a tube acrylic? This is a tube acrylic, so okay. um, we also have gouache. And this is a very, very large size brush, which I really shouldn't be using. I should be using much smaller brushes because I really have uh, very poor brush control personally. And you can see how nicely it, it, you can control it. Notice how it doesn't go all over the place and you can really control the strokes. That's really important with, uh, with uh, Golden Natural. It's a thirsty brush, so it holds a tremendous amount of color. And you, you'll oh, actually, we had an interesting comment there that sure. said these particular brushes are not ideal for blending. So what would be better for blending? I can't see why you can't use it for blending. Why, why wouldn't you use it for blending? You mean in the palette? Is that what you, you refer to? So let me show you my dirty palette. This is my watercolor palette. That's why I'm hiding it over here in the corner because I don't want people to see what a messy looking palette I have. Someone and asked if it has a uh, filbert. Yes, there's a oh, filbert. Oh, sure. There's in fact, a there's wonderful a filbert, filbert in the giveaway today. Yeah. And here you can. You can blend the colors. And if you want to blend them on the surface, you can do that as well. But this is just blended on my palette. And, and you so can. I asked if there's a liner. Yes, we have a liner in Golden Natural as well. I don't know if I have one here, but there definitely is. We yeah, have. That's part of the giveaway today, also yes. with the liners in that. Sure, set. sure, yeah. for that as well. So let me just also show you that we are coming out with a. Oh, this is exciting. This is very exciting. We're coming out with a new quill. I'm coming out with a Golden Natural quill. This is very, very, very absorbent, and it's, it's. We also have our 100% Taclon quill. Well, clearly, this is going to hold more fluid than this Taclon will. This Why? Is because of the natural hair that's in it. Okay. It's the blended. It's the blended series. So this is going to do a beautiful job, and it's less expensive. But this is going to hold so much color, and you know, it, if that's what you want, you want to hold an awful lot of color and put it on the surface. So what's that that you're using? What medium? That was watercolor. Okay. I thought I'd use watercolor. Sure. But um, here we are using that, and notice how nicely that comes, and you can do a lot of detail work with it. Now, this is a brush series that will hold so much color that, you know, sometimes folks have difficulty with enormous amount of fluid, like with black velvet or 100% squirrel hair. This will also hold a huge amount of color but it will be a lot more controlling. You'll be able to control your brush a lot better. You'll be able to get into small little areas that, um, you know, something that holds a lot more paint might give you some difficulty. And this, this will absolutely allow you to do that. We're gonna have this in three sizes, small, medium, and large. And I think I bought one small and one large here. And there was a question if these brushes, a Golden Natural, are mm -hmm. available in sets or as individual brushes. Okay, that's a very good question. Both. both, yes. We're coming out with new sets for Golden Natural. Uh, also, each brush is available individually. Right, well. and we should have the new sets hopefully by the beginning of um, 2021. If you can believe 2021 is around the corner. Okay, this is already November. So um, this, is gonna, this holds a huge amount of color. It's, uh, to me, it's a very exciting brush. It, um, it's going to do beautiful work for you. You'll be able to find this on our online resellers as well as in stores. And uh, this is just an extraordinary amount of color that it will hold. And those of you that love to deal with quills, um, work with quills, this is a perfect brush. Can I give a little aside story about yes. the quill? Tell the quill story. The quill story, okay. So, you know, this was the first brush that was ever made in terms of the shape. I don't know if you realize that. But um, you, you may have heard of a fellow by the name of Michelangelo and some of the early uh, Renaissance painters. They needed a way to get paint to the surface of their canvases. So what they did is they went down to the tanner in the local area where they were. And the tanner, and they said they knew what they wanted. And what the tanner did was they took bones of different animals that were nearby 
and they took those bones and made a handle out of it. Maybe they carved a little bit or had a wheel or something, ground it down. And then they took the hair of anything that was running through the yard, anything that was running through the tanner's yard, dog, cat, rabbit, whatever it was, weasel, and they that's the hair that they used. And then this was... This is hundreds of years ago. We're this is about. hundreds and hundreds of years ago. We're yeah. talking about Michelangelo. Yeah. And um, then what happened is they, they wanted to get the hair to stay on the head. So they made a hollow in the top of the handle and they put the hair in there. And then what they did was they took, this, is, um, this used to be the grizzle around the chicken leg and they would use that and then they would get a wire and they were able to close this with wire or whatever they had at the time. So this is actually, I believe, the oldest shape artist brush in, in the world. And they came originally, they, they had them in China, they had them in Europe, and, um, you know, it, 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 I just love historical things like that, and I, I just find that very, very interesting. So this is the quill. We have it both, we have it in, in the golden tackle on 100%, and now we're going to have it also in the golden natural. And I'm excited about it. Now, look at that beautiful tip that we have on that, so you'll be able to get right into all the little detail work that you need to do. Um, my personal preference is a slightly so a larger size because you can always go smaller with it. You can't really go bigger when you have a smaller size, but that's personal preference. That's something that you're going to have to decide what you want to do. What's the metal around the? Uh, it's a wire. Yeah, just a copper wire. It, it's right? just a, it's just a wire. Yeah. That's all. Then the next shape that we um, that we're introducing, and I don't have all of the sizes here, and I please forgive me for this. Um, is our new dagger striper. So this is a dagger that um, you will be able to use in golden natural. And why is that important? Because this is going to hold a huge amount of color and you'll be able to get your beautiful, and you can see it's brand new, I'm just uh, loosening it up now. You'll be able to do the beautiful ribbons that you like to do. The holidays are coming and there's nothing better for the holiday than doing something with uh, making ribbon and um, some of you do paintings for gifts and things like that. And uh, as a matter of fact, somebody gave me a beautiful um, painting that made it look like a wrapped box. And uh, she used um, one of our daggers on that. And this is a big size, certainly a big size for me, but you'll be able to do all kinds of interesting stroke work with this. And it's, it just does what it's supposed to do. Now, this now is what media is this? Uh, let's see, I'm fooling around. I'm using acrylic and watercolor. Okay. So. And that's tube acrylic or the fluid? Uh, no, that was tube acrylic. Okay. That was tube acrylic. That's gouache over there. Should I try gouache also? Yes, yes. Lots of gouache fans. Lots of gouache fans. Gouache is very beautiful. And, um, you know, gua what gouache is, I'm sure everybody knows that gouache is just an opaque watercolor. But it does cover nicely, doesn't it? It's a very good brand that I'm using, and I won't tell you what brand it is. <laughs> I could see that happening. And what size is that, Derek? It's too big. It, this, is, this would be an extra large. I actually don't think we're bringing it in this big because it is too big. Uh, I prefer it more controlling, which is this size. I'm using the large size so that I can demonstrate for you and uh, let you see the bigger size in use. But I can use the uh, smaller one, too. So this is gouache, and this is t too light a color. I'll use a darker color. This is again gouache, and now I work with a, a gal who's extremely talented. Her name is uh, Jenny Granberry, and she could do a much better job than me. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you some of her uh, work in a little bit, and um, she would do a beautiful job with the strokes that she could get from a dagger striper. So that's the two shapes that we have coming in for Golden Natural. And as I said, we changed everything about it this year, the whole look, and people are really beginning to see it's a very different brush than just a golden tack on. And that's, that's very rewarding to me because it's just, it says that, you know, it needed some sort of oomph out there. And Thank you to several people who, you know, when I said I'm at my wits end with this line, I, I don't know why it wasn't doing well. And they said, please try something else. Don't discontinue it because it's just the, my favorite brush. I want to thank them 
uh, a gal named Beth and a fellow named Jim and um, I'm glad I did and I'm glad we all persevered because it really has paid off okay then let me show you some beautiful artwork that was done with these brushes and um, this is a gal named Drew she is out of uh, the Philippines I believe and this is uh, Patricia uh, not sure where she's out of this is this is work that's done with uh, golden natural and they're using some black velvet also and this is done by, by Jenny Jenny Granberry she's she was showing uh, the plants that she's doing uh, with these brushes as well as this, this is Patricia again and this is Patricia again also and this is Drew so you can see it just makes beautiful, beautiful artwork. It does beautiful uh, strokes. It holds so much color. It's, it's very, very absorbent. It's uh, thirsty. It's a very thirsty brush. So here we have our, our little turkey. Someday he might be a finished little turkey. Who knows? Well, we have another Facebook Live before Thanksgiving, so maybe we'll work on the turkey some more in two weeks. Uh, well, right. <laughs> we, can, we can always hope. <laughs> So how are you folks doing? I'm so glad you joined me today. Lots of good questions. Good, come on, sure. let's have those questions. Right. So, along. so we've got the two new sizes here. Uh -huh. <coughs> two new shapes. Using it in lots of different, excuse me, two new shapes. Uh -huh. You're using it in lots of different media. Uh, I noticed one question that came in earlier was, is it safe to be switching back and forth the way you are across all of these water-based media? It absolutely is because they are, you just, you highlighted it, they're water-based media. So you're not going from a solvent base to a water base. So whether it's gouache or fluid acrylics or watercolors or um, regular acrylics, they're fine. Then nothing will happen to them and, and nothing will uh, diminish in the brush itself. They're just fine. Okay. Yeah, not a problem at all. Uh, there was a question earlier about cleaning up the brush if the uh, color stays in it and gets hard. So that's a common question, and I know we, we do that a lot, but it yeah. also is very important for everyone. So you have this Here's, fancy, fancy... Uh, yeah, we have this here. fancy uh, bucket here, and I did warm this up before we started. Um, so how do you get dry paint out? It, first of all, that's not easy. It's not easy to get dry paint out. But um, what you can do is dip this in, in hot water. This is actually very hot water, and you can clean it out that way. That also straightens the hair. It gets the hair to go back into its original shape, and you're ready for painting. So for now, this brush is really pretty clean. What I would do is just make sure it's clean on my <laughs> napkin, which it is, and get that over there, more over there, more over there, and I'd let it dry. <coughs> the best way to let it dry is with the head up, with the head, head down, down, excuse me, yeah. the head down. And that way, you get the moisture to go out. Remember the question, thing- Question, uh, what happens, so if we do this, Alina asked this question, it's a good one. Oh, Lena. Uh, Alina. Alina. Um, what happens if we try to get this out, uh, but it doesn't work? This way with the boiling hot water? Yes. If it's acrylic, if it's watercolor, if it's gouache, if it's any other media that I'm using here, you won't you won't actually have a problem. I if, just might have to be patient, go back into it. Again yes, yes, that definitely again. is true. You might have to work it out. That's absolutely true. You might have to work it out and get it out. Do it very very gently. Pull down with a uh, lint-free uh, um, towel. But Will the hot water damage the hairs? No, no, it won't. No, because what we're doing is we're doing it very quickly. We're not leaving it in for a long time. And you're certainly not stirring soup. You're just leaving it in there and you're dipping it in very, very quickly. It will not hurt the hair. As a matter of fact, when paint gets up in the ferrule, uh, the only way to get that out, when paint gets in the ferrule, and that happens to all of us, we get paint in the ferrule, what you're gonna need to do is melt that paint in there. And the only way to do that is with the boiling hot water method. And that is you go halfway up the, fer the ferrule and you start getting the uh, paint to melt. You bring it down and you start pulling it out with the cloth like that. And, the, and it will start to melt, I can guarantee you that. That's if the paint is there under a year. If you have brushes that you say you got from Antilly 
and she they've been dirty in her studio and you just got them and they've been dirty for 20 30 years I, I doubt if you can get it out I really I really do but if they're under a year you, sh you really should be able to get the paint out of the ferrule even if it's oil color acrylic color gouache watercolor it doesn't matter what it is you should be able to get it out just be patient do keep going back here keep on doing that and it will come out and this way you have the use of your brush again one of the things that happens when paint gets in the ferrule it gets very hard to maneuver the brush so the hair starts going all over the place and you you're looking at it saying you're not working the way I want you to work Does and the ferrule get rusted no not these no these these are anodized nickel over uh, brass no they won't rust no. okay and same question about the quill um, the string around the quill earlier someone had asked if that okay would remember it's not string it's it, this is wire. Not string, wire it's it's wire nothing's gonna happen to this no and I can even put this in here this is the boiling hot water this tends to get less um, water I mean paint in the ferrule because everybody's tends to work like this they work the war the working like this you see that they're working with with the head down so the paint tends not to go into the ferrule at all with this particular type of brush see that notice how nicely I can get into the dots I love this brush I really do uh, and Kira works here also and she loves this brush and when we were looking at the samples we went ooh, let's get these in these are just yummy yummy brushes mm -hmm. they really are how are the hairs attached to the ferrule epoxy glue they're, they're, they're glued inside uh, in here so what happens with uh, heads like these is they're glued so th what the brush maker does is the brush maker so all silver brushes are handmade yeah. first of all we should point the heads out. yeah the heads so are there's a, there's all a handmade. crafts person craftsman or craftswoman who's actually putting the hair inside the ferrule and then attaching the ferrule to the well handle. the first thing that happens is it's put in something called a cannon a cannon is the opposite of what the head's going to be so the hair goes into the cannon the brush maker takes it out and then uses a string generally to hold the hair together they then take it and they put it inside the ferrule they glue it inside with what's called an epoxy barrier and most of the time they use a hand crimp so you can see the crimp right here you see that that's called a crimp over there so you, this is put together twice it's it's for strength so it's got the the glue in in the uh, in the tip over here as well as over here and then they crimp it and this gets crimped as well and so you've got double holding capacity over here okay and and so that's that's one of the things that we do the other thing we do is we put a uh, second epoxy barrier right here in the middle and that also is to protect the head so we know that everybody goes like this and leaves their brushes like this in a cup and a mug and things like that well, except for your students here on Facebook live well that's true that. they're perfect but in any case we have another epoxy barrier in the middle and we have another epoxy barrier at the top of the handle that's inside so you've got three epoxy barriers within the handle so that when you do leave it like this the moisture doesn't go down into the handle and starts to crack the handle and that kind of explains why a silver brush is going to be more expensive than, than a lot of what's out there on the market this you know the triple epoxy barrier the handmade the craftsmanship that's required in, in each individual brush mm -hmm. uh, all of that is kind of what goes on behind the scenes that explains why they're so long lasting and and indeed this this will last year after year after year after year even if you do abuse it like I abuse my own brushes okay before we question we've, we've had this question quite a few times today so I do want to while we're just talking about the uh, the epoxy mm -hmm. um, concern about the epoxy melting when we put it into the boiling water no it's made specifically for this this the, you know uh, the world of glues so the world of glues there are I'm sure if anybody's ever taken chemistry or looked into anything, there are millions of glues in, in the world. There really are. And the one that we use here is, you know, made specifically for artist brushes where you can put it into every kind of media. They know you're going to leave it in water overnight, which you shouldn't do. 
And so they need to have something that adheres. You can put it in a hot water. Remember, we're not stirring soup. Remember, we're not gonna leave the brush in the hot water. We're gonna dip it in like that. So it's barely even noticeable at the brush end. You see that? And, and that's it. Nothing will happen with the, with the boiling hot water and the brush. I, I, I've never seen it anyway. All right. Well, we have some winners. Did you have anything final you wanted to mention about Golden Natural? Well, we give away I, I think that, you know, if you have X amount of money and you say to yourself, I want to treat myself to something that will last me for a very, very long time and just be a, a treat to use, I think you should try a Golden Natural brush. I really do. I love them. I'm very excited about them and I, I think you will be too. All but right. I did want to show you these. Okay, go ahead. Just, show that. This is real quick. So this is in our Silver Silk series. And if you can recall in the old decorative arts days, there were uh, some very nice uh, little teeny mops like these that uh, folks used to have. And I, I did sample this with um, a gal named Peggy Harris, who many of you know, and, and hi to Peggy if she's watching and she is in love with these little brushes. This is our little silver silk Wee Mops. I think it's called Wee Mops. And um, you know, this is something that's coming mini out. Mops. It's a mini mop. And it, you know, it's something that's gonna hold a, a lot of color, but you'll be able to get into doing those little, little teeny spots that you would like to do. Um, Peggy does a lot of animals and um, you know, she, I know she really loves these a great deal. So these will be out. These, the brushes are out right now, but we'll be coming out with a set of these in uh, 2021. Also, a shout out to uh, folks at uh, Creative Innovations. I think that's a, uh, a Facebook group that was started by Debbie Cole. And greetings to all of you. Glad to see you uh, on, the, on our Facebook Live. Thank you for coming today. And if you have any questions, you can, you can ask those as well. All right, so we have some winners. Winners. So first winner is this set. This is with the angle and the number eight round and the liner and the filbert. And this goes to Doris Pham in British Columbia, Canada. Ah. Congratulations, Doris. Ah, very nice. All right, number two, we're giving away this case. This is a Tuscany case. And this goes to Pat McDavitt in New York, somewhere oh. in the state of New York. Congratulations, Pat. And then number three, another Golden Natural set. This is that three-quarter inch wash that you used a lot today. Uh, the Ultra Round, number eight. It has a flat shader, number six. And very, very tiny five zeros, 2,000 round. So great for detail. And this goes to another Canadian, Lindsay Holman. So congratulations, congratulations. to our three winners today. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, we are back in two weeks. Let me grab my little sheet here, excuse me, and show you. So this is our next Facebook Live, November 19th. Right at before 12 Thanksgiving. 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Yes, Thursday, November 19th, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We're looking forward to seeing you all again. And remember, uh, many, many more tips uh, for taking care of your brushes are on our website, silverbrushcare.com and on our Instagram page and Facebook, silverbrushltd.com. If you joined us late today, this is recorded and we upload it again. Oh, uh, so just right here on Facebook, it'll be uploaded within five or 10 minutes after we're done here today. So again, thank you all for joining us and that'll conclude today's webinar. Thank you very much for coming.